those of you that knew Sister Evelyn Pauline Harrison McCoy, she was always on time. Amen? And so we're going to start on time. Amen, in honor of her. And if you spent any time with Sister McCoy, you would know right off the bat that she was a God-fearing woman. Amen. She exuded that, that she had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ in her conversations uh, and in her actions. Because a lot of people profess Christianity, but they don't live it. This woman of God lived a Christ-like life. And I'm so honored that I had the, the um, I don't even want to say privilege, uh, that God blessed me uh, to be in her life and her to be in my life for the time that we had. But this is not the end. If you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. Amen. As we move on in the spirit of worship, let us stand, not the family. Family and friends, you may continue to be seated, but we would ask everybody to stand as we sing our first hymn of comfort, blessed assurance, and that will be followed by the reading of the Old Testament scripture by Elder Paul D. Tate, followed by the New Testament scripture by Reverend Clinton Edwards, and then we will have our prayer of comfort by Reverend Grula Brower, followed by a solo. Amen, somebody. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit. Thank you. 
assurance. Jesus is ours. A Psalm of David, 23rd Psalm says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. As we celebrate this lovely lady, the family will have us to read from the New Testament, Revelation chapter 7 in its entirety. And it reads, After this I saw four angels standing, holding back the four winds of the earth, so that no wind could blow on, on earth or sea or against any tree. I saw another angel ascending from <clears throat> from the living God and he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to damage earth and the sea saying do not damage the earth or the sea or the trees until we have marked the servants of our God with a seal on their foreheads and I heard the number of those who were sealed 144,000 sealed out of every tribe of the people of Israel. From the tribe of Judah were 12,000 sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 sealed. From the tribe of Gad, 12,000 sealed. From the tribe of Ash was 12,000 sealed. <clears throat> From the tribe of Nathalem is 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. From the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. From the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. Seal. And after this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count. From every nation, from all tribe and people, and languages standing before the throne, before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belong to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their face before the throne and worship God singing amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever amen then one of the elders addressed me saying who are these robed in white and where have they come from I said to him sir you are the one that knows then he said to me these are they who have come out of the great order they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb for the re for this reason they are before the throne of god and worship him day and night within his temple and the one who seated on the throne will will shelter them they will hunger no more thirst no more the sun will not strike them for the lamb of the for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Lessons to the word on this evening. Family, we are praying for you. We love you. Amen.
Amen, saints of God. It's time for prayer. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for our gathering here one more time. Lord, it's not at a, a good occasion, but then it is. Because another sister is gone on home, God, to be with you in glory. That's what we're working for, God to be with you in glory. We work in God for to hear you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. We're working toward the crown of life, God. And Sister Evelyn has met her crown of life. And we got to work toward that, God. We can't be slow for now, God, because the world has gone crazy. And we must be, Lord God, have the mind of Christ Jesus and set forth to do his will. We must go out, God, and let the people know that you are real, God. Keep your commandments, God. Teach them and baptize them in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Ghost. It's no time to drag our tail right now. But it's time to be on speed, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray a comforting prayer for this family. I pray, God, that they remember the good times. I pray, God, that they remember the fun times, the glorious times. Oh, God, I pray that they remember the times when they was going to church together, eating together, playing together, sleeping together. Lord, I pray that those memories come back to them. I know they got sorrow in their hearts right now, but God, you told us weeping may endure for a moment, but joy comes in the morning light. And we're looking for joy, God, when we enter into heaven, God. We're looking for that joy, God. Yes, we are, Lord. And we pray, God, for the daughters, God. We pray for the daughter that has high blood pressure, God, because we know that you, God, can operate the heart, God. You can lower that blood pressure, God, where she won't have that problem anymore. I know she misses you the mother God, but God, we don't want nobody to miss out on heaven. No one, God. Father, we pray for the sisters and the brothers. We pray for the cousins and everyone. We pray, Lord, that your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, give us a victorious time. Hallelujah. It says a celebration of life. But God, we want to do a homegoing service today. We want to clap our feet, God. If you give us a dance, we want to dance, God, for you, Lord. Knowing that she lived, lived a good life and loved the church and loved the church family. And for this, we give you all the glory, all of the praise, and all of the honor. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. While our sister is coming, uh, can we put our hands together again for a well-lived life? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I believe that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. And I know that my auntie was a praiser, so I will sing this song. I need your help. You brought me through this. You brought me through this, yes. You brought me through that, oh, Lord, I'm grateful. Yes, I am to you. Through 
She was joking, she was joking, she was joking. But I said to, uh, uh, to the family, I said, uh, I just wonder if we just sat here and just imagined how when Sister McCoy entered heaven, what was her reaction? And that put a smile on, on, on her daughter's face. I know one thing she did. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. All right, we're going to keep it moving in the spirit of worship. Let us remember that this is a, a celebration of life, amen? A well-lived life, amen? Amen. Now we will have words of expression by a family member and then followed by Miss Dorothy Brower. Uh, what I would do is ask everybody that's on the program if you would come to my left, your right, the usher, Brother Z, will guide you over there. Of course, if you're a preach, I mean a minister, you, you're you welcome to come uh, from the pulpit. And uh, we would ask you to limit your comments um, to two minutes. That's, that's as a special request of the family in honor of Sister McCoy. Amen? Amen. Blessings to the clergy and my family. May I have permission to go beyond the two minutes? I'm representing a mighty family. Evelyn and I were raised in a village of loving great-grandmothers, grandmothers, grandfathers, parents, siblings, cousins, aunts, and uncles, and numerous caring neighbors. When passing through Cameron on Highway 2427, you probably cannot imagine 
that today we had such a village. For it was just another, and is usually just another reduction in your speed from wherever you're going, and you hope that the train does not stop you. Well, in our childhood, we were well connected by family, neighbors, and church. Once you crossed US Highway 1 now, our community extended on both sides of 2427 for about a mile radius from there to the old US 1 today. We were daughters of women who were first cousins. They were more like sisters. They loved picking peas together, all of that stuff. Our families, the Harringtons, the Vestals, the Johnsons, the Corneliuses. Our mothers were part of a village that we shared, from homegrown food to rides to Sanford, to church services, first and third Sunday, Hood Chapel AME Zion Church, second and fourth Sundays, first missionary baptism. We attended all of them as a village. We did not separate our worship. Evelyn, being two years older than I, was more of a big sister cousin. She and her siblings and my brother and I, along with other school-age relatives and neighbors, rode a bus round trip to Carthage, Pinckney High, every day. She looked out for all of us because she was older and more mature. On those long walks from church to home, Sharon Mills shared with me today that they had lots of laughter. They laughed all the way. Evelyn was one, if you look at the pictures, she's smiling on every picture. She kept that same caring spirit throughout her life. Each time I saw her, she'd ask, how was I doing? How was other family members? As she asked, she looked directly into your eyes with that adoring, caring smile, waiting for the answer. She loved her family and friends, and her love was genuine. We also remember that she played the clarinet for a little bit. I'm sure you all remember that in the house. <laughs> she showed love and respect for all people, Sharon said, irrespective of their status. She was a true Christian. I have to share with you, because these will be Brenda's two minutes. Evelyn loved to cook, and there were family gatherings, uh, big meals, Christmas, Thanksgiving. She'd tell the family, don't cook, just come. So on occasion, she'd say, well, well we're having something different this Thanksgiving. We're having soup. turkey soup and sandwiches. And she cooked the red velvet cake, but only half of it was left. <laughs> now, she also did a great deed for Brenda's birthday. And she said she was going to cook a cake again, but only delivered half of it. <laughs> because Someone else named Nett had a birthday. Are you Nett? And she shared half of it with Nett. So Brenda, that's your, that's your cake. And she told Brenda and Fred, y'all didn't need a whole cake anyway. And in, in Brenda says she's very thankful for the times that God allowed her and all the family members to have with Evelyn. They called her Addie. I don't know where y'all got that from. Most of all, she accepted Jesus Christ as her personal savior. And she let everybody know it. What a glorious birthday celebration and renewed life she had when she entered the gates. If we can all just say happy birthday, Evelyn. Rest well, my cousin.
good afternoon. I know Evelyn would want me to do this first and foremost. So, give an honor to God, my Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Love to her family. Lots of love. To everyone else, love also, because that was Evelyn's forte. Love was in her heart. Evelyn and I were classmates at Pinckney High School. It was during the mid-60s, and Moore County School decided that they had to follow federal guidelines and integrate the schools. New schools were built. We had been at Pinckney, most of us, for 11 years. We had strong friendships, strong family ties. But with the new schools being built in different areas of the county, it was easier for some of our classmates to attend those schools. But it got a little costly for Moore County to operate all those schools. So in 1966, they closed Pinckney once and for all. Pinckney High School was a large school. I would think that basically most of the folks in the Carthage area, Cameron, Bass, Robbins, Northern Moor, West End, maybe you've heard of some of these places, they all went to Pinckney. So when Pinckney closed, our classmates separated. We went to the new schools basically one year, one year, graduating in 1967. Then we went on to our respective lives and we kind of lost touch. We lost touch with each other. But a few kept in touch. And then after 50 years, you know it's amazing how God works. He picks and chooses people to do great things. After 50 plus years, Evelyn and a few of our classmates got together and decided that it was time for us to start getting back together, to celebrate birthdays. After all, we were not getting any younger. We were getting, as we like to call it, seasoned. Not old, but seasoned. You know, and we got back together, celebrating birthdays. September 2017 was our first get together at Golden Corral in Southern Pines. We had a wonderful time. Then they came up with additional ideas. What would be wrong with getting together at everybody's birthday? Let whoever birthday it was pick and choose the restaurant and we all would get together and go out and eat and have a good time. This was Evelyn's idea. A few others also uh, helped with it, but we put that together. Then COVID came about three years ago, and we stopped going out. But the birthday celebrations continued. Evelyn had developed a database, email addresses, uh, phone numbers, of classmates, many that we had almost forgotten about. And she would call, text people. She didn't email too much, but she would let people know when birthday time was coming. We would all celebrate by calling the person, sending cards and whatever. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of time to do all that. But she felt that it was something that she had to do. Evelyn called me, and I'm sure a lot of others, her brother in Christ. She just didn't say it any kind of way. She said it like she really meant it. You couldn't be in a good mood and talk to Evelyn. You couldn't be in a bad mood and talk to Evelyn. You just had to accept Evelyn as Evelyn. Because that was Evelyn as we all grew to love. You know, uh, I remember uh, talking to Evelyn on a number of occasions, and she would just, my brother in Christ, 
how are you doing? I said, I'm doing fine, Elvin. Hope everybody on your end. Oh, everybody's fine. Isn't God good, she would tell me. I said, yes, God is good, Elvin. We're still here. I said, well, we're still here. And you know, uh, when we started putting these birthday celebrations together, you know what we discovered? We had lost half of our classmates. They had gone on to their reward. So it was imperative, important, that we work to put this together. And I'm so glad we did. You see, that Evelyn, as we've heard and read the obituary, she has many things that will make her legacy. But that's one more feather in her cap, so to speak. One more plus that's going to be written in those books that John tells us in Revelation that will be open come Judgment Day. All our deeds will be in those books. Evelyn's got some good deeds. So, you know, I think she'll be okay. I think she'll be okay because I know something. I have known Evelyn for 75 years. I called her Saturday. She's in the hospital. I could tell her voice was weak. But when she answered the phone, you know, the first thing she said, Percy, my brother in Christ, how are you doing? What a fantastic way to greet somebody when you're in the hospital. Evelyn, my brothers and sisters, answered that old age question. This question is as old as mankind itself. Am I my brother's keeper? It's a good question. She answered it by the way she lived. She answered it by the way that she greeted people and treated people. Her hard work, her dedication to her church, her family. She answered that question. And from everything that I know about Evelyn, I know that one of these days, I'm pretty certain about this, pretty certain about this. Now, it's nothing I can say will help her on her journey. The Bible tells us that her spirit has gone back to God who gave it. But Jesus will return one day. And judgment will follow. I believe in my heart, deep in my heart, that Evelyn will be able to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. It unto my rest, and she'll be just fine. So for the rest of us, let's not just remember Evelyn. Let's remember what she stood for and let us go forth in doing the things that she would want us to do and using her as a good model of what Christ taught because he will come back one day and we need to be ready. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Family, we love you. Before I close, I want to share one other fact. This is our, I know everybody can't see it, but this is our annual, our last annual from Pinckney High School, 1966. And I want to read what Evelyn wrote in this annual to me. Dear Percy, love many, trust few, Learn to paddle your own canoe. Your dear friend, Evelyn. Thank you. Praise the Lord. To God be the glory today for this celebration. I just want to say we're going to talk about the real McCoy. Amen. 
That's what she always said. I'm the real McCoy. And she always had a smile, and she always lit up the room, and she always had something kind or something funny to say. I remember when I saw her over on the church parking lot a few weeks ago. And I just want to stand. I'm not going to be long, prayerfully not going to be long, but I just want to say ever, I met her in Master Life class. We were Master Life students, and we, had, we were our prayer partners. And uh, we prayed together, and that's how I got to know her. We were, she was faithful in prayer, a uh, woman of God, loved the Lord, and you know, we had fun. I'll tell you real quick of a situation how we got to know one another. We went for a drive, and it was a car, it was a, uh, we were riding on the road, and it was a two-lane road, and uh, we had an accident. We thought this car was gonna go back in the lane, and it did not, and so, Sister McCord was driving the vehicle. It happened so fast. And I said, I don't even remember. What, what, it just happened so quick. And before I knew it, it was like the airbag came out. And I looked over at her. I said, are you all right? She said, yes. We tried to get out the vehicle. I couldn't get out on my side. I said, we're going to have to crawl out, Sister McCord. We're going to have to get out. And so, but she, you know what? She maneuvered that car. I tell you one thing, she could drive. I know that. She drove that day. And she did, and I said, God, I thank you. And we did, we got out the vehicle, and we made it together, and we went to the hospital together. We stayed there with she and I, and we couldn't do anything. They wouldn't let us move, so all we could do was talk one another. We were just looking up like this and just talking to one another. And Because, you know, we couldn't move our bodies, because we had to have an x-ray. And so we got to know one another, we were just talking, and before we knew it, we had our x-rays, we were able to be released. And I was so glad I saw Sister Julia that night. I said, a class leader indeed. I was so glad to see her. We both were so glad. We just wanted to get out of the hospital. But God is a good God. And I thank God for bringing her, uh, bringing her uh, along the way and being able to share a few words today about how she was so loving and kind and knew the, uh, knew the Lord. That's a, you know, we have a, the Bible says that, that uh, in my, he has plenty, many a mansions for us, prepared for us. Heaven's a place for prepared people, and I know she was prepared. And I didn't have any revelation, any uh, sadness about getting up to say anything good words to her because she lived her life. You know, the Bible says, let, uh, the word, uh, there's a song that says, let my life speak for me. Her life spoke for her. So it's not hard to get up here. Her life spoke for her. She was kind, she was loving, and you know what? I, had, I think about the good things. I'll never forget, she made a, I think it was a red velvet cake. And she used to make them red velvet, she had a, she made a red velvet cake, it was like a heart, and she put them walnuts in it, and it was so good. I didn't know she could cook like that. I said, oh, this is so good. But, uh, but you know what, <laughs> but you know what? She, uh, it's so funny though, she said, you can have this cake, but you know, I enjoy the cake. We had a good time, we, you know, laughter is good, and we're gonna remember her, and I choose to remember the good things. Family, be encouraged. She lived a good life. She, we had fun. And I choose to remember the good times. And I thank God, and I know she's in heaven with the Lord. And she probably said, I'm the real McCoy. And Jesus, and Jesus probably said, I know who you are. <laughs> but to God be the glory for the life she lived and the legacy she lives for her family. I'm praying for the family. You will all be encouraged and know that we will see her again. But in order to see her again, we got to be saved. Amen? We got to know the Lord. Amen? And she did. To God be the glory for all the things he's done. Amen. Family, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it's truly a great day for a celebration of such a great woman. I was her class leader for, for, for a moment in time, in, in 2018, and S Sister Evelyn just made such an impact on each and every person that she met. She was like bigger than life. She was just large, and, but, and I knew for every time I encountered her, she just, 
did something to me and, and to my spirit. So then I asked the previous pastor to, shall we make her a class leader? And he said, yes. He said, what took you so long? I said, well, I have to, I have to wait on God, right? But Sister McCoy, she was truly a servant. She didn't come to be served. She came to serve. And every aspect of this church, she served and she served. And as a class leader, she would call me and she would say, Reverend Van Dyke, I, you know, I, I got this member that I just don't know what to do. They're hurting. They, they, they need, they need something. I said, I said, well, Sister McCoy, please make sure that you turn their names into the church and our poor steward, our minister of kindness, will try to help them if they can. And she said, well, but I think I need to help them right now because they're in dire need. And I kept talking to her and I kept comforting her and telling her, you can't do everything for everybody, Sister McCoy, but I know where your heart is because you want to serve them, but just know that God has got them because as God has you. Sister Evelyn, oh my God, Pauline, Harrington, McCoy, and affectionately known to you all as Addie, I'm telling you, this is a woman of God. Yes, we know that her spirit is no longer here with us, and this is her remain. But I'm telling you, oh, heaven received a true, true angel in this lady. She was good, she was great, and I loved her just as I would love anyone that's in my family. So family, please, keep her in your heart. Keep her in your memory, and remember how she was. She never met a stranger, she, I'm telling you. And, and she just said, oh, Reverend Van Dyke, you and Sister Rose, I just love y'all, you know? And every time I met her, she would tell me that. And I said, thank you, Jesus. So it's great to know Sister Evelyn Harrington, Pauline Harrington McCoy. God bless you. that he has been in our life for everything that he has done. I want to thank my cousin, Dorothy Brower, for the wonderful expressions of love from the family. I just want to say that Evelyn was truly here for the Oates cousins down in Hamlet, North Carolina. We met about 25 years ago at a humongous family reunion where there were members of the family from all over the country. I did not know you, I knew of you all, but my father went back home and he brought all of us with him. And I am so grateful for having met you all. We had a beautiful time and Annette and Evelyn have kept in contact with us and some of the others that have gone on to glory that lived up north and have gone on, but they kept in contact with us. When my father passed away in 2010, I have two siblings that passed away. Evelyn was right there with us in Hamlet. When my cousin Theodius Oates here in Fayetteville passed away, the owner of T.O. Plumbing, his son now Teddy has taken over the company. Evelyn was right there with us. So family, I am your cousin representing the Oates side of the family from Hamlet, North Carolina. May God be with you all. And Annette, we love you. Thank you for reaching out to us and keeping us abreast of what was going on because we were praying for Evelyn. Thank you all. God bless you. Admit, this is absolutely the hardest thing I've had to do in my life. I always had hope I'd get received here. But you brought your ticket before me. Mommy, you've never been the affectionate, soft type of 
mother, for as long as I can remember, you have always been stern, directional, militant, and a leader. You were a strong woman, always independent and not waiting on no one to make things happen. You instilled the fear of God in me at a tender young age. I watched you work long hours and most of the time two jobs to help take care of me and Billy. You were funny sometimes, quirky in some of your ways, genuine in everything. All these things remain true into my adulthood. The time came and I had to come home and take care of you. Neither one of us were interested, however. We conformed. The road was rough and tough. Every day we would press reset and start over. We would have good days, we would have bad days, and some days we were just plain out hell. But we endured. You would fuss, I would fuss. But most of the time, we would not let the sun go down on the wrath. I could not understand what was happening. How did you and I end up changing roles? I'm not sure. But the word of God says to honor thy father and thy mother, so their days will be long upon the earth. I would be obedient to God's word. I didn't have to understand. However, when you left me, I began to understand. This was your love language to me, Mommy. This was how you showed your love for me. Thank you, Mommy for having me, raising me, loving me, as you only could, and most importantly, instilling God in me. Thank you for your whole life, your whole experience, and your whole existence. Thankful for the last three years together that we had together. If I had to do it all over again, I would. I thank God that even in your last days, we were in good space. I remember visiting you on March 8th, and after I spoke to you, asked how you were doing, you said, I'm doing just fine. I'm still here. Thanks to God, did you wash those dishes is what you asked. <laughs> LOL. Even though we didn't have the party, we celebrated your 75th birthday on Saturday, March 9th at the hospital room, not knowing what the real party was going to be on March the 10th. So if you were here, I would present you with an award for being the best mom to me because the mommy that you were, you were made me as a woman that I am today. I love you, mommy. Is it not goodbye, but see you later. I will meet you on the other side, in Jesus' name. This is one of the birthday cards that was not, she did not see. The world needs more women like you. That's why I'm proud to be a part of your life and happy to celebrate the woman you are. Happy birthday. We love you, Percy and Diane. May God be with you. Sending prayers and love from the McDonald family. The spirit of a loving heart will live in memory. Praying for the family Meet Evelyn at Cody's. We always called each other after other sister. So I'm going to miss talking to my sister, Evelyn Addy. And this is the Joyce McDonald Davis. Rest in peace. Because we care, a message of comfort for you. And this is with love 
Elder Coleman Elliott, Lady Francine Elliott, and Lily Penrose Church family. A mother's love is never forever. She's with you in heart, she's with you in mind, she's with you in memories. Pastor Wayne and Evangelist uh, Kim Johnson and the Straight Gate Tabernacle of Faith Church family, Lillington, North Carolina. Mount Pispa Harnett, Bishop Reginald Kenton Sr. Pastor, Mother Mary L. McCoy Church Sister, March 19, 2024. Blessed are the Lord who died in Blessed are the dead who died in the Lord, Revelation 14, 13. To the family of the late Sister Evelyn McCoy, in his own way and for his own purpose, a few days ago, God, our Father, called the spirit of his beloved Sister Evelyn McCoy to be with him throughout eternity. We have gathered today to celebrate her home going. We acknowledge that God is God who does all things well. His love is unconditional and his promises are true. He has promised a place of peace and rest for those who love him and seek him to do his will. The question of, my, of why God has allowed this to happen is beyond our inadequate abilities to answer. We know that God loves you unfailingly, and he is with your loved one as she crosses from the world into God's eternal care and keeping. Therefore, on behalf of Bishop First Lady Janet Hilton, and the Mount Pisgah Hornet Church family, we offer this letter as an expression of deepest love and concern for you and your family. May God be your, be your refuge and strength, a very present help in your honor of bereavement. With sympathy, Bishop and First Lady Hinton and the Mount Pisgah Hornet Church family, Church Secretary Mother Louise McCoy and Sister Peggy Robinson. The original Cape Fair and Southeastern Free Will Baptist Church Annual Conference, on March 18, 2024, to Mother Brenda Williams and family. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sons and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. The offices, auxiliary, and members, member churches of the original Cape Fair and Southern West Western Free Will Baptist Conference greets you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. We take this opportunity to express our heartfelt condolences of the transitioning from earth to glory of your dear sister Evelyn McCoy. Many of us, many of us to have experience in passing of loved ones and it never gets any easier to bear the grief. We are praying that the entire family will be strengthened in the face of this personal loss. Our Lord has promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. We trust in his promise and have faith that he will perform as he has covenant with his children to do. He makes us feel his presence that we may be comforted and strengthened in our faith. We thank him for the privilege of bringing our burdens and sorrows that we might leave them before the throne of grace and graciousness. We ask God to speak to our hearts and minds today in words of love and comfort. Please know that the conference family is praying for you. In Christ, Bishop Frederick E. Clarinda, Sr., President, uh, Bishop Wayne E. McCoy, Sr., Vice President, Bishop Emer Emeritus Reginald S. Hinton, Sr., Elder Robert McEffa, uh, Administrative, Administrator, Mother Brenda Williams, Secretary, and Elder Angela Smith, Assistant Secretary. Mount Pispa Lee, Original Free Will Baptist Church. Uh, Pastor Elder Paul D. Tate. To Mother Brenda H. Williams and the McCoy family, we greet you with Jesus' joy and heartfelt sympathy in our hearts. There are no adequate words to describe the feelings of losing a loved one, but we do know that 2 Corinthians 5, 8 says, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. 
We found Sister McCoy upon her visit to our church to be very excited about the Lord, and she has no problem showing her excitement. She had a beautiful smile that radiant her welcoming aura. Psalms 27.4, one thing I ask of the Lord, and that is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. We are praying that you will find comfort in the strength of your faith and in your caring and concern of others. For through the days ahead will be difficult, but in time you will find peace. Knowing that your loved one is with God and will always stay close to you in your thoughts and in your hearts. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. We cannot take away the storms of life, but we can offer you the shelter of prayer through life's challenging times with sincere sympathy and love. Elder Paul D. Tate, the Mount Pispa Lee family. To my family and friends, death came quickly and gave me gentle sleep. To those that leave behind, please don't weep. The good Lord giveth, at times he taketh away. Nothing on his earth is forever to stay. Rejoice now and celebrate the life he gave to me. All things that happen are surely meant to be. When I was alive, you were all so dear. If you just remember the good times, you'll feel that I am near. It's time like these that weigh heavy on our hearts. Put a smile on your face and make a brand new start. Family and friends, I love so please. Don't weep. Death came quickly and gave me gentle sleep. Thank you. Simon Temple Amy Zion resolution to you on this morning. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Whereas Sister Evelyn McCoy was a member in good standing of the Simon Temple AME Zion Church, we have come together to rejoice as we celebrate such a well-lived life. And we give thanks to Almighty God for a life well-lived. Whereas Sister Evelyn McCoy served her God, we extol her for her resolute service to Christ and his church. Whereas the great cloud of witnesses has joined in the heavenly chorus in praise and thanksgiving for her life, we also join that chorus as she takes her place around God's throne. Be it resolved that the life of Sister Evelyn McCoy shall forever be remembered and cherished by her brothers and sisters in Christ and by the multitude of family and friends she made a noteworthy impact on and will forever leave a permanent mark upon the lives of the many she encountered. Be it further resolved that we extend to the family our deepest sympathy in these trying moments of grief and mourning. We encourage the family to continue holding to God's unchanging hand, for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family as a testimony to the life of a child of God as recorded by the Simon Temple Church family. And God shall wipe all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Compassion submitted the Reverend Dr. Keith D. Tillett, Sr., Pastor, the officers and members of the Simon Temple AME Zion Church, done this 19th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2024. And I pray that God continues to wrap his loving arms of comfort and peace around each of you as you go through this journey. Amen. We would like to thank every 
participant that was on the program, and we thank the uh, persons that uh, gave words of expression. And also, we want to thank uh, uh, Sister uh, Lovelace for that beautiful poem uh, that she wrote for her mother. We can thank Sister Julia Stanson for the reading. Now, as we move on in the spirit of worship, the family has selected On Time God. I'm about to take his thunder, I'm sorry. After we hear the choir sing on time, God, the next voice you will hear will be none other than the pastor of uh, Simon Temple, Reverend Dr. King Tennant. Let us keep him in our prayers as he deliver an edifying word from the Lord. Amen? Amen. That on time, God, yes, he is. Oh, he that on time, God, yes, he is. Well, Job said he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. But he's that on time, God, yes, he is. We're going to say that again. Mm, he's an old time God. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. Oh, 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 on time God. Yes, he is. You said he may not come when you want it, but he'll be there right on time. I tell you, he's an old time God. Yes, he is. The children of Israel trapped by the Red Sea. Now that mean old Pharaoh and his army, they had water all around them, and Pharaoh on the track. From out of nowhere, God stepped in and made a highway just like that. Oh, he's an old time God. Yes, he is. Oh, 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 oh on time God. Well, yes, he is. Job said he may not come when you want it, but he'll be there right on time. Well, he's an old time God. Yes, he is. The five thousand yeah. hungry souls fed on the banks of the river with two fish and five loaves of bread. What a miracle he performed for the multitude. What he did way back then, he do the same for me and you. Let me tell you, he's an old time God. Yes, he is. Oh, 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 old time God. Yes, he is. Job said he may not come when you want it, but he'll be there right on time. Oh, yes, he's an old time. He's on time. He's on time. Oh yes, he's on time. He's on time. He's on time. He's on time. Oh yes, you have to buy a thousand. He's on time. He's on time. Oh yes, he's on time. He's on time. He's on time. Well, no say he may. But he'll be there right on time. Let me tell you, he's that on time God. Yes, he is. Well, he's that on time God. Well, well, yes, he is. Oh, on time God. Yes, he is. Well, you'll say he may not come when you 
you want him, but he'll be there right on time. Be there on time, God. Yes, he certainly want to take this opportunity to thank each person who shared in this worship service. I certainly want to acknowledge the presence of all the clergy uh, in the house. All the all clergy, please stand. All, all clergy, if you please stand. All clergy, amen. I do know that we have, uh, amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Certainly good to see. I, I think I see. Uh, I think I see three shirts that are purple, uh, which tells me that I have three bishops in here with us today. Am I correct? I certainly want to honor and recognize you, and certainly want to thank you for being uh, here today as you uh, share in this uh, homegoing celebration. You know, whenever there. A cloud of witnesses as it relates to clergy in the house it says something about the person who has passed on that they in fact had a relationship with God and so certainly uh, want to thank uh, thank them for being uh, here uh, on today um, what a wonderful what a wonderful spirit uh, in the life of Evelyn P. McCoy uh, 70 75 years young and we thank God uh, for her. Let's put our hands together for this family and thank this thank God for the family as, as you all have been uh, you all have been holding up uh, holding up under under these uh, conditions, a season of transition. Um, and we've been praying for you. Uh, certainly grateful that uh, that uh, Mother McCoy, uh, she knew the Lord, had a relationship with God. There is no secret uh, to that, no secret uh, that she was a church worker, no secret that she was a community worker, no secret that she liked to travel, um, and, and no secret that she, that she was a hard worker. I don't even know nowadays if people retire after being on the same job for nearly 41 years. That's a long time to be working in the same place. And look at somebody, look at somebody say, that's a long time to be married to somebody. <laughs> that's a long time. Look at somebody say, that's long, that's long. I, I felt it in my spirit. Somebody said, boy, when you first connect, boy, it is beautiful. But after a long time, things start to get rough. Uh, but, but, but you're hanging there anyway, and we thank you uh, for that. And certainly thank God and praise God for her, uh, for her, for her faithfulness as it relates to uh, for her employment. Um, uh, I, I, th there's something that God wants to share with us today, and certainly uh, won't take too much of your time, uh, family, uh, because um, we know that you all have been pressed uh, probably for now just over a week, and uh, uh, the homegoing celebration is always the climactic moment, and, uh, uh, and then afterwards, uh, then people kind of start to disappear on us. Uh, all of those phone calls, they start to minimize, and uh, and all of that and so but it may be a good thing because you need rest yeah you need rest uh, for sleepless nights and 
people coming by and uh, and all of that. Um, so, so we want to we want to move expeditiously if we can without taking anything away from uh, what the Lord has to say uh, to us uh, today. Look at somebody say, "I need a word. I need a word. I need a word." Man, I know I need a word. I'm I'm I'm, pre I'm preaching and I need a word. I'm preaching and I I need a word. My God. Um, uh, if you have your Bibles or your device, whatever it is that you carry, uh, you may even have it in your heart. I want to I want to talk to you. Uh, I want to read Hebrews uh, chapter eleven. Go a little different today. I want to read verse one. A uh, very familiar uh, portion of Scripture. It says, "Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things." not seen, not seen. Um, spirit of the living God, now fall fresh on your servant. Lord, give me the words to say and, uh, and to pray, God, as you give me those words that they may move forth according to your purpose uh, and your plan by your power. Uh, I pray, God, even now that you would touch me uh, in a mighty way stand here for any form no fashion but I come just as I am like an empty vessel seeking to be filled with your anointing power spirit of the living God fall fresh now on me use me huh, to your glory and your grace and I pray that your word today as you utilize your servant uh, will be a word that will bring comfort in the midst of this season of transition. Do it, God, and we're going to give your name the glory and the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people in this house together said, Amen. 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 Um, um, Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. I'm going to stop right there. I want to share with you, family, if I can, for a few moments from this thought. There is hope. There is. There is hope. Um, one writer says like this, hope means hoping when things are hopeless or it is no virtual at all. As long as situations are really hopeful, hope is mere flattery or platitude. It is only when everything is hopeless that hope begins to be our strength. When I look at the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, it defines hope as a desire accompanied by expectation or of or belief in fulfillment or success or obtainment. Hope, my beloved, is most often thought of as a way of thinking, a way of thinking, a way of feeling, a way of acting that may help a person find the means to live with difficult situation and changes no matter how discouraging the future may seem. It is the belief, hope is, that there might be a remote chance, maybe a remote chance of getting something desired. Hope is far more than just an optimistic expectation of success or a better outcome of a current situation or challenge. When the world uses the word hope, my brothers and sisters, it is essentially an expression of uncertainty rather than certainty. It makes no sense unless there is a personal and loving God attached to it. Listen, biblical hope is not a denial of reality. Now, the Greek word for hope is el peace, which is defined as meaning to anticipate usually with pleasure and expectation or 
confidence. Now, biblical hope is not just a desire, my beloved, for something good in the future, but an honest, realistic, confident expectation and desire for something good or a positive outcome in the future to happen. Why? Because the promises of God are already in the process of being fulfilled. That was just a better way of saying that God is doing something in your life and you ought have hope believing that God is going to do exactly what God said he would do. Now, it is my beloved uh, to believe in the unbelievable and make the impossible possible. More importantly, however, is that hope is not a thing. It's not a thing. Hope, it's not a thing or a feeling or an object or way of thinking. Simply put, hope is Jesus. Mm. I wish I can. I wish I had a couple of minutes to talk about him. He's my burden bearer. He's my bread when I'm hungry, water when I'm thirsty. He's my everything. He is. Look at somebody say Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hope is Jesus. Now, now the confident certainty and expectation of hope that is provided to every believer emanates from. From experience knowing and understanding the character and the nature of Jesus. Hope is actually the placing of trusting faith in Jesus because Jesus is our hope. I pray that somebody came in here in the midst of a homegoing celebration to believe like Sister McCoy would that Jesus is our hope. He's our hope. He's our hope. Listen, trusting faith is, is all. It's all about living in the moment, taking no thought for tomorrow, casting all one's cares upon Jesus, and then leaving them at the feet of Jesus. I wonder if anybody in here today has left your cares at the feet of Jesus. Did you know that even in a homegoing celebration, you can leave your cares at the feet of Jesus? Listen, however, however, my beloved, the present world was never intended to satisfy human beings. Since we are discussing hope, we got hope today, we got hope especially on a day like today, let us examine hope in three quick ways and pray that it might give you, yeah, this family a comfort in this season of transition. First of all, family, family, first, family, first of all, you have the full assurance of hope. Mm. For the believer, any believers in the house? For the believer, hope is confident and fully assured because God is in control. Mm, my God, even here today in what appears to be the end of life, it's only the beginning. You know why? Because God is in control. Uh, hope and trusting faith are virtually synonymous. The Bible implores the believer to diligently demonstrate the full assurance of hope by pursuing it as the saints of old who, through trusting faith and patience, inherited the promises of God. Oh, I wish I could park here for a second and tell you that Sister McCoy inherited the promise of God. And we said it early, the promise is this, to be absent from the body is to be present with God. And I don't know, it may be a sad occasion for the people who are here for us, but I promise you, it's not for Mother McCoy. It's not. Because if you are with God, you are in a good place. I wish I had some people who know how to hope. Look at somebody say, hope. Hope. 
hope, hope, hope. As, as, as we desire that each one of you should the same diligent to the full assurance of hope until the end that you do uh, become sluggish but uh, imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises of God. The term full assurance in the above verse is found only in one other passage of scripture. However, instead of full assurance of hope, it says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. Oh, I feel like preaching right now. Look at somebody say, then he ought to go ahead and preach. Uh, I'm just telling you, that's what that's that's what Sister McCoy would have wanted. She wouldn't want me to just sit up here and say, oh, well, God will make a way somehow. She would want me to say, don't you know that God will make a, a way somehow? I want to talk about hope. I need some people in here who understand hope is something that should not waver because it is rooted in the faithfulness of God. How many of you trust God today? Even at a funeral service, how many of you have faith in God? It is a necessary part of trusting faith because it is directed uh, into the future. Ooh, I like that right there. Biblical hope is a strong confidence in Jesus and not wistful thinking. Hope and trust are related. Without trust in God, hope is useless and meaningless. It is often said that the biblical definition of faith is found in chapter 11 of Hebrews. However, I would say that it is more of an explanation of the working of faith and not a true definition of faith. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. That's the New King James translation. But can I say it in the New Living Translation? Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things that we cannot see. Although you cannot see it, you know that it exists. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. Oh, yeah, yeah, Hebrews 11 and 1, it tells us that we should cling to the hope we have in God. Oh, I need some people to have hope in God. We should place our total trust in God even though we can't fully see God. That means that believers should cling to the promises that God has made. And I'm telling you today that the Lord made some promises. He promised to never leave you. Uh, uh, look at somebody tell him hope yeah he hope uh, the bible says that the faith which justified Abraham was faith in the future work of God uh, meaning that the same God that blessed Abraham with a bright future is the same God that's going to bless you in this house today huh. Abraham's faith was his strong confidence I like this right here his strong confidence in the reality of God's word and his hope was his strong confidence in the fulfillment of God's promises in other words whenever wherever whenever trusting faith in God looks to the future it can be called hope Oh, my God. Oh, let me keep on going. Can I give you another point? I got to hurry up and go. Not only do we have the full assurance of hope, but secondly, you must answer the question regarding negative hope. Ooh, I just said something. I wish I, ooh, I wish I had time, uh, uh, Sister Sharonda. I wish I had time to work with it. Fear and hope are very similar because they are both forms of anticipation of the future. Oh, I just said something. Huh. Look at your neighbor say, he said something. I did. Fear, fear is a form of negative hope. Quite often our thinking is dominated either by hope of success or by fear of failure. Yeah. If a person's hopes are dashed on the rocks of reality, they will often target their anger at God because they feel like God betrayed them. Uh, uh, this unrealistic optimism and hope can
can have long lasting emotional, physical, and spiritual effects. Listen, believers live in a state of tension. 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 The feeling that it is, it is produced in a situation when people are anxious and do not trust each other. Tension. A state of tension and external longing in this world. Our natural instinct is to try and run away from the tension and then try to fulfill those desires with false hopes and things made by the hands of man and not God. I came here to tell somebody, you can't trust man, you got to trust God. <laughs> this world was never designed to satisfy human longing because people are meant for intimate and eternal trusting relationships with God. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what a, he really already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. I need some patient people in here. Can I tell you God is coming, but you got to be patient. He's coming. Let me say it again. But you got to be patient. Patient. I'm going to say it for a third time for the Holy Ghost. God is coming, but you have to be what? Patient. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to be patient. Oh, it is God who provides every need by giving the means to obtain what is needed at the appropriate time. When the time is right, God going to show up. Uh, that's a pretty way of saying it. Might as well, we might as well just cut, you know, cut across the field to get to the other side of the road. I came here to tell you that God's going to give it to you, but he's going to give it to you when the time is right. Huh. Look at somebody say, you can't rush God. You can't rush the blessings of God. I know some people who tried to rush the blessings of God and ended up making a mess out of everything. But if you got patience to wait on God, the Bible says, wait on the Lord. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Huh? Let me calm down. Let me give you point number three and then I'm out of here. Point three. Let me give you point three. Huh? My God. Huh? My God, here it is. We've examined the full assurance of hope. Look at somebody say hope. Hope. And somebody asks you what you what the preacher preach about today. Hope. Hope, hope. Uh -huh. And we have answered the question regarding negative hope. But finally, let us examine the hope of heaven. I don't know about you, but I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. I, I, but the only way to get there is you got to go by way of death. My God. Listen, the believer does not have to wait until they die to enter heaven for Jesus to come to them because Jesus is already living in them. <laughs> I wish I had about 10 people who could testify that Jesus is on the inside. <laughs> Christ, Christ dwells. Paul said in Ephesians 3 and 17, Christ dwells in, in the heart by faith. Now, now heaven, heaven is not just a reward for those who have remained faithful. It is the place where believers hope to forever dwell because heaven is Jesus. Oh, oh my God. One day Jesus is going to come back and he's going to receive us to himself because he is our hope. He is. Peter said it like this. Can I just give you two scriptures and I'm done? Peter said in 1 Peter 1 and 3, praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of the dead. John declared in 1 John 3, 2 and 3, dear friends, we are already God's children. But he has not yet shown us what we will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him. For we shall see him as he really is. And all, and all who have this eager expectation will keep themselves pure just as he is. 
myself. Oh, faith and hope, they go together, baby. Mm. Ah, and the same thing, yep, that are the objects of our hope are the objects of our faith. It is a firm persuasion and expectation that God will perform all that God has promised to do in Jesus Christ. Don't you know that God will do what God said God going to do? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, Sister McCoy had the full assurance of hope. She did. She had a hope that did not waver, didn't vacillate. It was rooted in the faithfulness of God that was directed into the future with a strong confidence in Jesus. That's just a better way of saying she believed in Jesus. <laughs> and she refused negative hope. Her natural instinct was not to run away from the tension, the pressure, and then try to fulfill those desires with false hopes and things made by the hands of man, but rather God who provided everything that she needed. She trusted God more than she trusted man. She trusted God. God more than she trusted materialism she trusted God look at somebody say you got to trust God and finally she had the hope of heaven because she understood like believers do they understand that when we that when we leave here we're going to a better place and it's called heaven look at somebody say I'm going to heaven well, well I got to go I got to go. I got to go. Fried chicken waiting next door. I got to go. Uh, uh, let me, let me, let me close with this. Um, um, there was a sick man. Sick man. Sick man turned to his doctor. Sick man turned to his doctor, and he said, "I'm afraid to die." He, Tell me what lies on the other side. Very quietly, the doctor said, "You know, I really don't know." At that moment, at that moment, Spot came running in the door, his dog, and sprang into the room, and he leaped on him with an eager show of gladness. Now, turning to the patient, the doctor light bulb came on in his head. Doctor said, did you notice my dog Spot? <laughs> He's never been in this room. Ooh, I'm preaching to somebody. He's never been in this room. He, he, he didn't know what was inside this room. He knew nothing except that his master was here. Uh, and when the door opened, he sprung in without fear. Ooh, I know, I know, I know a little. I know a little of what is on the other side of death. But I, but I, I don't know. But I do know one thing. I know my master is there, and that is enough for me. And when the door opens, I'm gonna run on the inside. But can I tell you? Can I tell you what Sister McCoy got on her birthday? She got the gift of eternal life. The door was open. <laughs> and she sprung on the inside and started praising God because of a hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder if there's somebody in here today, you ready to spring? Look at your neighbor, say spring. Spring in the door of victory. Spring in the door of success. Spring in the door of opportunity. Opportunity. Spring into the door of living. Spring into the door of blessings. Spring, 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 spring. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the blessed Holy Ghost, we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. God, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the power that's found in it. And may it be as transformative as you said it would be. That it will heal, deliver, and set free those of us who are in need to be relieved of our bondage. Thank you, God, for this wonderful life of your servant 
who had hope in you. And because of that hope now, she resides with the immortals in paradise, celebrating the goodness of God in God's face around God's throne. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen. Amen. God bless you. Listen, I, we, 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 we got to go, but, uh, but do you mind if I do something very quickly? Um, because I believe, I do, uh, because a celebration of life, service, it's a worship service, right? And we have gone through all of the elements of Christian worship with the opening and uh, and we worked our way down to the word uh, uh, but but here is what I oftentimes uh, say is the climactic moment of worship and that is to offer the Lord Jesus Christ to somebody uh, I, you know uh, I, I believe with all my heart uh, this sister, this sister McCoy, uh, because she was a child of God, a believer, and uh, she would want me at her at her celebration of life. Said, Pastor, you better open the doors of the church because there could be somebody in here uh, who has yet to give their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. May may I do that? May I open the doors of the church if you're here today, uh, my beloved, and you have yet to connect with Christ to give your heart to give your total self to Christ you know you you've been dealing with a whole lot of stuff in your life you've been been dealing with a whole lot of people that have meant absolutely nothing to your progress and your success but after hearing this word today there is hope <laughs> and we defined hope in the midst of this message in in being connected to Jesus Maybe there's somebody here today, you want some real hope. And I'm going to drop Jesus. I'm going to drop him like he's hot in this sanctuary. And just maybe there's maybe just one person, I don't know, maybe two, maybe three, I don't know, who may not know him. Well, the Bible says if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be what? Saved. If you're here today, it don't take a whole lot. All it, uh, look, listen, all it takes is, Lord, forgive me for what I've done. You can say that right where you sit. Lord, forgive me for what I've done, the places I've been to, uh, the things that I've connected myself to. But now I need, I need that hope you were talking about. That hope is Jesus. I need, I need a new life. And Lord, I, I pray for your forgiveness and I pray that you would accept me and receive me into the household of faith. If that's you today and you're here, I'm only going to take maybe 10 more seconds. Wherever you are in, in this sanctuary, I just want you to stand on your feet and acknowledge that you need the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. Is there just one who will stand today, stand bold on the promises of God, knowing that if you stand up for God, God will stand up for you. Is there one today? Just one. Just one. One who will stand, one who will stand, say, you know, enough is enough. I'm sick and tired. Enough is enough. I'm tired. I need to know that when I walk out of this building today, if something should happen to me when I get outside, then I'm going to go to the same place that Mother McCoy went to. If that's you, will you stand? Will you stand? Will you stand? 60 more seconds. Here come 30 seconds. Will you stand? Will you stand? Will you stand? God bless you. Look at somebody say, I'm glad we all saved. I'm glad we all saved. I'm glad we all saved. Yeah, I'm glad we all saved. Uh, amen. The funeral director's coming now to give us guidance. Come on, look at a couple more people say, man, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. <laughs> and look at somebody else say, and I got some hope. I got hope. I got hope. Woo! My God, my God. <laughs> mm. Woo.